if you're a fan of the Big Bang Theory or if you've ever really watched the show, then you know that one of the, the plot points there is that Sheldon is very particular about the way that things need to be done. And they have to be done in a certain order and in a certain way, especially if you've agreed upon that and you've signed the, the roommate contract or whatever it is that, uh, that he's established for that. It has to be done in that way. Otherwise, it's, it's hard for him to function, right? And in fairness... I kind of relate to that in some ways. There's a, there's, if there's a right way to do things, that's going to make it easier on everybody. Then why would you not do that? Uh, but uh, sometimes it led to different um, outcomes for Sheldon and his compatriots there. But, but I did have some appreciation for that. And, and there's some of that that exists really in the function of news writing. If you are a journalist and you're writing, um, of course, this is particularly important for you. But even if you're on the periphery of that, if you work in public relations or some other field that works with journalists and you expect them to help you or to, to work with you on something, then it's important to know the way that news writing functions, not just how stories get on. We have a different video on news values, um, which is important, but just like what is the appropriate way to write something for journalistic purposes, for media purposes. So let's take a look at some of the news writing basics that will make our lives easier and make the lives of those around us easier if we're working with journalists and, and also make it more likely that, that we're going to get things published or get things on the air if we're providing it in the right way and we're writing it in the right way, making their life easier. So first of all, just to quickly classify and categorize, there are a couple different types of news stories. And we need to just be aware of the basic differences here. First, there's what we call hard news. Hard news is what you would see like in a newspaper generally, like in the in the front page or whatever. It's just the basics, right? If you're a Dragnet fan, you know, it's just the facts, ma'am. That's it. It's it's giving us the, the bare details and, and some context for that. And it's really just what we would call straight news or hard news, very objective in terms of uh, the way it's presented. It's just giving us that information so that we're aware of this thing, right? That, so that's hard news. That's what we see a lot of times in what we would call traditional or straight news reporting. But there are also what we call features. These are articles or, or stories that are a little more in depth. They provide more of the story behind that. They're going to have more of an emotional connection. Um, so when you see an article about you know, an actor in their background, or maybe, maybe from your hometown, you have somebody who's a successful actor from your hometown and your paper or your local news station does a, a story on that person where they just follow them around and see what their life is like and see what they've been up to and how they got to where they are and providing some stories and quotes, you know, anecdotes and things from their, their career. That's what we call a feature, right? It's a little more uh, emotional connection. It's not strictly the hard news, not just the facts. It gives much more breadth and background on that topic or on that subject, right? So that's a feature. It's more of a, a connection with the audience on an emotional sense and an emotional basis, right? Then there's also what we call editorial, right? editorial writing, editorial type of news story, which is essentially the opposite of hard news in some ways. Right? It's very opinionated. That's where you can express your opinion and you say, this is why we should support this or not support this or, or this person should be elected or not elected or whatever. These are editorials where they're giving opinions. Again, hard news is more objective. It's just the facts, just trying to share the information with the audience and let the audience make their own determination about what's good and what's not about that. Editorials, though, are offering an opinion. In fact, there's oftentimes called op-eds for opinion and editorial, right? So uh, an editorial, though, extends into this is the opinion, this is the, the why this is important, and this is what you should do about it. So there are different types of news stories. We need to understand where they fall in. And if we're presenting a story to a news outlet, what kind we might be presenting. So we need to be clear about those uh, distinctions and definitions and those broader categories. Okay, next up, when we're writing for news, most news publications use what we call the inverted pyramid structure of media writing. So the inverted pyramid is just what you see here. It's an upside down pyramid. Right. So basically says, okay, you're going to start with this at the top. This is the most more. And then we're going to narrow things down as we get down to the bottom. So the most important, what should be at the top is what we call the lead, right? And the lead is where we're just going to establish the, the key principles, who, what, where, uh, when, and how, right? Who, what, where, when, how, and, uh, and maybe even why, if that's a part of that, we could add why to that, but it's the one to two paragraphs at the very top that convinces the audience to read the rest of the article, but it also provides um, specific information, provides all I mean, We should be able to read those first two paragraphs and really know at least the details, the sketchy, not sketchy, the, 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 
the uh, framework of what is going on in that situation, right? We should have a sketch of what's happening in that situation. Maybe not as much detail, but it's going to give us the basics so that we can at least have an understanding of what is happening there. Again, the who, what, when, where, how, maybe even why in the lead. So it may though include as well a, a compelling narrative, which is just a story um, or a provocative quote or question, a noteworthy statistic, something that's there to hook the reader though, to help keep us reading so that that lead should have all those basic details, the most fundamental details, but also be put together in a way that that compels us to go even further. And whether that's written in a newspaper or a magazine, something like that, or whether it's the lead story in like television news or a podcast or something like that, it's the same idea. We should give the basic facts up front, but also something that's going to hook the audience, do it in a way that's going to hook the audience and get them to keep reading or keep listening or keep watching or whatever it is. Okay. So the lead is what starts us off here. Then we get into the body. The body is the next segment. It could be, you know, a few paragraphs, depending on how long you have or how long this article is, or, if, you know, depending on how much time you have in your broadcast. Um, this is though where you're going to get into things like the story, the arguments, the issues in greater detail. You're going to be much more expansive in the body of the, of the article or of the story. You're going to include quotes. You're going to include photos and video and audio and any other kind of evidence that you may have that's going to support dispute or expand that topic for the audience. So this is where you throw in everything else. So the lead is, you know, again, bare bones, who, what, where, when, how, and why, and then maybe something that that's going to hook them. But in the body, that's when you get into everything else. You put in as much as you can to compel the reader and to inform the reader and provide context and depth and background and all of that in the body then. Okay. Cause hopefully again, if you've done your job in the lead, hopefully they're continuing on into the body where you can do that. Now you need to be strategic about what you're saying and how you're saying it and when you're saying it within the body as well. But this is where you have a chance to paint with that broader brush, provide those uh, greater details and fill in some of the gaps that, that may be missing even from the lead. So we've got the lead, then you've got the expansive part in the body. And then at the very end though, you have what's called the tail. The tail is just going to be any interesting extras that you want to throw in there. Um, so maybe some wraparound to the beginning. If you started with a narrative in the lead and started telling a story there, maybe in the tail, you, you, you wrap that around and bring that story back to its conclusion so that people can know how that story ended or whatever. Uh, and then any analysis that you, you have to throw in there would be in the tail with you, that you wanted to include. Okay. So this is the inverted pyramid though, structure of media writing. So when you're writing for media, you need to keep this in mind. This is what's going to make it easiest for them to use because this way, when you send an article to, um, to a, a TV station, a radio station, or to a newspaper, they know that if they have, you know, just this much column space, or if they have 30 seconds to give to the story, then they have their information in the lead that they can use to really put that together. Then as they have time, they can fill things out with the, with information from the body. If they have more time or more space, they can fill that out and they have that information there, but they also have just what they need in the lead to do what they need to at the beginning. Right? So they can fill in, then they can draw from that as they, as you, as you're pulling from that story, uh, especially if it's like a news release, that's why you want news releases, for example, to be structured usually in the inverted pyramid so that news organizations know, well, if you only have this much, then share this part first. And then as you have more opportunity, you can share the rest of this information, right? But you got to prioritize in that sense, because this is how they're going to be looking at it um, from a news um, structure. And this is how many, many, many stories are structured. Now, this is not the only way of doing this, but this is the way a lot of news organizations will structure a story. They will use the inverted pyramid structure. So it's important that we understand that and have an idea of how to utilize the inverted pyramid as well. Okay. Last thing we're writing headlines. And the reason that this is the last thing we're talking about is really because it's the last thing we ought to be doing, but headlines can be important, but it shouldn't be the first thing on our mind. Headlines should wait till the end. You should begin your story. You should have an idea what you want to write about. And then you write, and then you keep writing and rewriting and so forth. And then when you're all done with that, when the story is really pretty finalized and good to go, that's when you might write your headline because that's when you know what your story's about. You don't start with the end necessarily in mind. You got you to gotta write the story and see where it ends up. Then you'll know what needs to be in your headline. Okay, so wait until the end for your headline. You don't write your headline first. You write your headline last, really. You got to summarize the content in like six or seven words or less in that headline. What's the story about? If I'm only going to read the headline, if, I'm, if you've only got six or seven words to describe it, 
what would they be? You got to summarize that and get it down to its, its most concise um, uh, version and form right, for the headline. So it ought to summarize the content. Obviously, you're not going to have the opportunity to get into great detail. But again, if somebody's just going to look at the headline, would they know essentially what happened? There was an earthquake. There was a car accident. This person was arrested, whatever. Um, can they can they at least have some idea of what it would be? And then and should also hopefully compel them to read the article. But but it ought to summarize the content. It should be concise. Again, sh headlines, especially in newspapers, things like that, shouldn't be more than six or seven words at most. OK, so you got six or seven words at most to convey what that article is about. If it's on the web or something, you can sometimes get away with a little longer, especially if you're trying to do some like clickbait type thing, then you may want to have something a little longer to, to share with the audience. But, but, uh, but in a newspaper, again, where space is limited, it really does need to be concise. No more than six or seven words at the absolute most. It ought to be short, but it ought to be clear. We got to focus on keywords. This is, you know, grammatically, we're not going to worry about that too much in headlines. We're going to focus on, you know, we're going to leave out any like, you know, ands and those and the, where it's where it's possible, right? So it's going to read more like a telegraph in some ways, right? If you if you can imagine that, um, but but we're going to leave. We're going to focus on keywords, keywords that share information and draw attention. And again, we have six or seven words. So we're not going to waste a lot of those on a and an and but and those types of things. Right? We're going to focus on just those keywords and make them count for our headlines. Okay, so. There is a right way to do things in writing for media. It's not the same as writing for anything else. It's not the same as writing for academics. It's not the same as writing for just uh, just you know, writing novels or, or for personal pleasure or anything like that. There's a specific way to do it. And first, we ought to understand it so that we understand you know, how the media works. But also, as uh, if we're working in the periphery of that, if we're working in something like public public relations or some area that may want to entice media, a media organization to run with a story, we ought to know how they write so that we can make their job easier and we'll have a better chance then of, of getting what we want publicized, publicized. Hopefully this helps you understand a little bit about the basics for news writing. Obviously there's much, much more to go into, but I just wanted to give you an overview here really quickly of some of the basics and especially the inverted pyramid um, and talk about that just briefly. So you're aware of it and something you can work with as we move forward here. If you have questions about any of this, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. But again, hopefully this gives you some sense of what is unique and special and important when we're writing for the media.